My brethren, peace of the Lord Jesus. I'd like to invite the brethren to open the word of the Lord in the book of Mark. Gospel according to Mark, chapter 6. Mark 6, chapter 30, verse 30. Mark 6, verse 30. We're going to read unto verse 44. This is the word of God. Then the apostles gathered to Jesus and told him all things, both what they had done and what they had thought. And he said to them, Come aside by yourselves to a deserted place and rest a while, for there were many coming and going, and they did not even have time to eat. So they departed to a deserted place in the boat by themselves. But the multitudes saw them departing, and many knew him, and ran there on foot from all the cities. They arrived before them, and came together to him. And Jesus, when he came out, saw a great multitude, and was moved with compassion for them, because they were like sheep not having a shepherd. So he began to teach them many things. When the day was now fast spent, his disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and already the hour is late. Send them away, that they may go into the surrounding country and villages and buy themselves bread, for they have nothing to eat. But he answered and said to them, You give them something to eat. And they said to him, Shall we go and buy two hundred denaria worth of bread and give them something to eat? But he said to them, how many loaves do you have? Go and see. And when they found out, they said, Five and two fish. Then he commanded to them to make them all sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in ranks, in hundreds and in fifties. And when he had taken the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven, blessed them and broke the loaves, and gave them to his disciples to set before them, and the two fish he divided among them all. So they all ate and were filled, and they took up twelve baskets full of fragments and of the fish. Now those who had eaten the loaves were about five thousand men. Let's pray. Lord God, we praise you for your word. We ask that through your grace, your Holy Spirit may speak to us and strengthen our faith. Lord God, through your word tonight, in the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Beloved brethren, the text that we just read is a text that is very well, well known of the church. It is, in fact, the first miracle of the multiplication of the bread, in which the Lord Jesus, in a situation of great limitation, they were here away from the city, apart from the places where normally people would go to acquire food, and uh, that was an obstacle, a difficulty for the ones who were there. And the Lord Jesus, the disciples, actually, they came to Jesus, and when they realized the situation, they said, Jesus, Lord, send them away so that they can go to the neighboring cities and buy, what, uh, buy their food. But the answer of Jesus, like, happened many times before, surprised them. He said, give them yourself what to eat. And they were surprised. But Lord, we don't have 200 denarius, which was necessary to buy bread and food for all this in this crowd. It was, there was too many people. And the quantity of 200 denarius was a considerable amount. And then Jesus asks, what do you have? We have five bread and two fish. And Jesus instructed them to divide the multitude into groups and operate there a great miracle of the multiplication of the bread. And it is interesting that there was a second instance on which the Lord Jesus operated a similar miracle. 
we're going to see a couple of texts, a couple of verses on chapter 8, Mark, Mark 8, that deal with the second multiplication of the bread. Mark 8 from verse 1. In those days, the multitude being very great and having nothing to eat, Jesus called his disciples to him and said to them, I have compassion on the multitude, because they have now continued with me three days and have nothing to eat. And if I send them away hungry into their own houses, they will faint on the way, for some of them have come from afar. Then his disciples answered him, How can one satisfy these people with bread here in the wilderness? And uh, when I got, I'm not going to read the rest of the text, but Jesus, in an equal manner, asks about what they had, and he also operates another miracle, a great sign, answering to the need of the, that entire multitude that was with him for already three days. And at this moment, in a desertic area, apparently there was no easy access to neighboring cities. In the first instance, they would were possibly near other cities. That's why the disciples suggested this possibility. Send them away so that they can buy food for themselves. But in this in the second circumstance, the second miracle, they were in the desert. There was not even a possibility to buy something for them was, was available. Very well. So we see that there, there were a few different points in these two miracles that the Lord performed. And would like to make a, a comparison of those points, showing to us an, a beautiful teaching from the Word of God regarding the care of the Lord towards men. The word of the Lord says, the Lord loved the word in such a way that he sent to his only begotten Son, so that whoever believed in him may not perish, but have eternal life. So the love of the Lord Jesus is not only towards the church, it is towards the world. The ones that we are servants of God would have uh, judged that them unworthy in the same way that the Jews they thought that the Ju the Gentiles they were unworthy people they would not get mixed with them and everything else but we see that in these two miracles the Lord Jesus said a couple of things that teach us and highlight to whom this part of the passage is geared towards. And this first miracle, you see that the circumstances were very interesting. The disciples were tired. They had gone away to evangelize, and they described everything that they had done and thought, and even a couple of miracles that the Lord allowed them to perform. And the Lord Jesus, because also susceptible to the same condition of man, called them to rest. Called them to rest a little bit aside. Come and rest a little bit on the side in the desert area. They had the purpose of getting out of that crowd. They entered into a boat and went to that place. However, the text tells us that many, they were in the surroundings and they had already heard about Jesus when they saw him departing they recognized him and ran there because they needed a blessing and when the Lord Jesus comes into that other location which was going to be a place of rest he is faced with a crowd that was already waiting for him there and the Lord Jesus did, did not reproach the crowd or got angry with the crowd but instead, he said, the text said that he was uh, was moved of compassion, compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. My brethren, this word is very interesting because it gives us the understanding regarding the ones who are not servants of God, the love of God towards men, the lost men. Because the ones who were here that multitude before the Lord Jesus 
they were like sheep without a shepherd. They were not servants of the Lord Jesus yet. They had not received the blessing of knowing the Lord. But there were people that were apart from the Lord still, the part, apart from the kingdom of God, but desiring, hungry for a blessing, hungry for, for a spiritual blessing for their hearts. So Jesus interrupts his what was going to be his rest and of his rest and the, of the disciples as well and begin to teach them many things and we see the prayer of the Lord towards salvation of the lost many times how many times our church they had visitors the Lord reveals the need of the visitor the Lord reveals a message according to the the need of the visitor the priority of the assistance is toward the visitor because there's no greater miracle than the salvation of a soul. There's no greater miracle. The Lord can do wonders in our lives, and He does. We pray many times for deliverance, for blessings, operation of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And we were guided by the Lord to do so. But without a shadow of a doubt, the greatest miracle that the Lord performs is salvation of man is to extend his hand to the one who was lost. The Son of Man came to, f to find, to seek, find, and bless the one who was lost. And when he disembarked, he saw the great multitude, and he was compassionate of them because they were like sheep without a shepherd, and began to teach them many things. And in this, the Lord also teaches that that's, that's the priority that we should have. We should always pay attention to the need of the ones who, was, who are around us that are not serving the God, that need a, a blessing of salvation. I remember once of a sister that became a convert in a certain church. And when she accepted Jesus on that church, she found a co-worker. And she said, oh, you're here? Yeah, I'm a Christian for 10 years or 15 years. But that sister had never spoken about Jesus to her co-worker. And God was able to reach that woman through a, a third party, third person. And in a certain way, the Lord, in His grace, in His kindness, corrected that servant because she had spent time with that new convert for a very long time at work and she never had sought an opportunity to speak about the Lord Jesus. But the Lord Jesus here, He stops everything. It was a moment of rest. The disciples were tired from, from their journey. But the text says that Jesus was compassionate with the crowd and He did so because they were sheep without a shepherd. He began to teach them many things. And the second miracle. The second miracle is very interesting because it is related to the grace of God and with the supply of the Lord, with the love of the Lord to the ones who are servant, the ones who are already servant of the Lord. When the Lord Jesus finds that crowd in chapter 8 of Mark, it was a different crowd different than the former. In the first one, Jesus, the text says, Jesus was compassionate of them because they were sheep without a shepherd. They didn't have Jesus as their shepherd. But of this one, he speaks something different of, of them. In the second miracle, he says, Mark 8, 2, I have compassion on the multitude because they have now continued with me three days and have nothing to eat and if I send them away hungry to their own ho homes, they will f faint on the way, for some of them have come from afar. So the miracle of the Lord was for the ones who were, have been three days with the Lord. We know that number three speaks about the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus, prophetically in the Word. And in a prophetic way, the text speaks about the ones who were already walking with the Lord. They remain with me for three days. And if I 
send them away hungry to their home, own homes, they will faint on the way. Because they were already on the way. Because the servants of the Lord, when they accept Jesus, they continue having needs. We continue with our needs before the Lord. Recognizing our great dependency on the Lord. Much more when we accept Jesus, when we realize our condition of sinners, flawed, we are even more in need. We present ourselves uh, even more dependent on the Lord, and the Lord does not reject His servants. Of course, the priority, the number one priority, is the salvation of, of lives. But the Lord never forget of His own. The Lord is faithful to, towards His people, to the ones who are with Him, that remain with Him, they are working in the kingdom of the Lord. Many times wearing themselves out, but the Lord does not forget of His servant. Blessed be the name of the Lord for this. And at that moment, the Lord says in the same way, I have compassion on these people because they have been with me for three days and don't have anything to eat. The need was also great for the ones who were with Him. And if I send them away hungry to their own homes, they will faint on the way. So if I do not answer to their needs, like the Lord is speaking, they will faint on the faith, they will faint on their way. And the Lord will not allow that to happen. The Lord always look towards His servants, to the need of His servants, to the plea of the humble, the plea of the needy servant that is going through a trial. And many times, my brethren, we come and say, Lord, we're serving you, and we see this difficulty, have mercy. The Lord never fails. And to give help to do His... When we wait on the Lord, the Word of the Lord says that He works towards the ones who wait on Him. The Lord always is paying attention to the prayer of His servants, paying attention to the ones who follow Him. Of course, there are moments of trial so that we can edify, be edified on, on faith and we grow spiritually. But even the moment of trial and the right moment, He comes with the victory and the deliverance. The Lord comes with, with the supply to our needs. And the last point that I would like to highlight here is that in the first miracle, the lack of food could have even have been supplied if they went to the neighboring towns to buy something to eat. But on the second one, this possibility was not non-existent. They were in the middle of the desert. The disciples didn't even mention this possibility, what, which gave us to understand that they were far away, too far from the sources of food. And why is that? Because the trial of the servants is greater than the one that who is the new convert. The new convert cannot is not able to withstand great trials. And the Lord operates toward the one as well as the other. The Lord gives blessings and deliverances. But the Christian that have been walking on the Lord many times goes through a harsher trial because they are more mature. They may have already had other experiences with the Lord and will be able to exercise their faith in a situation that may even be more difficult than the ones who are new converts. But here, generally speaking, the texts, they speak of the compassion of the Lord towards the need of men, the need of the ones who don't know the Lord, and He goes to seek the laws in order to give them a, a wonderful blessing of salvation, as well, the need of the ones who are his servants that already walk with him for three days, they are already on the way. The Lord will answer to their needs of, of their children, of his servants, because he's a graceful, a compassionate God and is a good leader. He, there's no better leader than Jesus. He answered to all our needs. Blessed be the name of the Lord. May the Lord bless us. Glory to God like to ask the brethren uh, a song so that we can sing, sing and glorify the Lord.
Glória a Deus. Glória a Deus. Hallelujah. Let's have a word of glorification to the Lord. Lord God, we glorify you for this wonderful word because you give, allow us to go through trial, but you are beside us, helping us, Lord, to get out of them because we know that everything has a purpose for our lives. That's why you glorify, Lord, for this word because we know that you have a food for us, a a sustenance even if we are on trial, but you are beside us, feeding us, uh, strengthening us, so that we may continue to have hope of eternity in our lives. And that's all that matters to us. That's why I glorify, Lord, for this wonderful word. And we say that we love you and that we want, Lord, that you are with us always, feeding us, strengthening us, and helping us to walk. We praise you, Lord, and already thank you for this wonderful word in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Ronildo, do you want to bring this service to a close? Let's finish, my brethren. Lord God, we praise you for the privilege of once again being in, the pres in your presence, in fellowship with our brethren. We praise your name and ask for your grace that you receive our service of adoration. In the name of Jesus, amen. And the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Father, and the fellowship and the holy consolation of the Holy Spirit be with you, my brethren, and the entire people of God on earth, now and to the wonderful return of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'd like to thank the presence of Pastor Luis Langeras, who lives in Texas, and our brethren who are watching us, from Marieta, from the family of Houston, and the ones who are watching us through YouTube. Let's now give opportunity to the brethren to greet one another, and if you need an assistance in a prayer, remain until the end, because we would like to pray for you. Amen. Tuesday, we're going to be praying. We're already informed of the groups. The prayer list, and each brother should be pick, pick up the list of 15 minutes for prayer. And during those moments, pray to the Lord for the topics of the church, the topics the war, which are related, because surely the Lord has a blessing set aside for each one of us. One and wish everyone the peace of the Lord. Amém. Vamos aproveitar, Pastor Luiz. Nós estamos aqui com algumas irmãs, alguns irmãos que estão com Covid, foram, foram testados positivos hoje.